the topic of today's online lecture is a dialogue between Buddhism and Taoism, a comparison of concepts of Buddha nature and Tao nature of medieval China. This lecture will be delivered by Professor Adrian Sun. Professor Adrian Sun is an assistant professor in the Department of Buddhist Studies of Foguang University. She received her doctorate degree of religious studies in McMaster University in Canada. Her expertise is on Chinese Buddhist thought of medieval China, the concept of Buddha nature of Chinese Buddhism, an intellectual interaction between Buddhism and Taoism from 3rd to the 10th centuries. Without further ado, please welcome Professor Adrian Sun. Hello, um, everyone. Um, I am Adrian Sen, and it is a good opportunity for me to present my research work of interest here. And um, today's, um, let me switch this screen. Um, the title of my uh, presentation is a dialogue between Buddhism and Taoism. And uh, today's my presentation is about an intellectual interaction between the Buddhism and the Taoism by comparing the concept of Buddha nature and the Tao nature of a medieval China. And it's by looking at the title, uh, I put on um, here as a dialogue between the Buddhism and the Taoism, it's because this dialogue is taken within China as it is a dialogue between Chinese Buddhism and Taoism. That these two traditions had, uh, had some mutual conversation on their concepts of a Buddha nature and a Tao nature, respectively. So um, I would like to uh, mention in my today's um, PowerPoint, probably the, for some text, I only provide uh, in Chinese because um, I would like to uh, save some uh, space uh, for my uh, um, PowerPoint. And from the, this um, um, this slide, and we can see it, um, Ji Zhang, he is the first Buddhist uh, exegete in Chinese Buddhism. He asserted that the plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature. So from this diagram, here is about my summarized my uh, today's whole argument on how uh, I'm going to examine how Ji Zhang, he legitimized plants and trees to be included in the concept of Buddha nature. And a more detailed examination will be provided uh, in today's presentation later. So from this diagrams, uh, we can see it uh, starting from the very bottom. Um, the Ji Zhang is based on the concept of Buddha nature of Indian Mahayana Buddhism. So although the Buddha nature, which is uh, here, is considered as a Dharma body in um, Indian Mahayana Buddhism, but we can see from here, this uh, Dharma body is must be have to have the sentient being and the Dharma body together. So which means that they are inseparated. In other words, the Buddha nature, which is, it is discussed within the realm of a sentient beings. But in Jizang's argument, he took only Buddha nature in terms of a Buddha uh, Dharma body, and um, he just uh, connected this uh, with a Chinese thought, which is um, in, especially the Chinese thought in Taoism in Arkan study, which is um, especially, especially referring to spontaneity, which is uh, uh, interpreted as in terms of a universal principle. So in Jesus' argument, uh, we move on to the top ones. Um, this is a Chinese Buddhism, which is uh, Ji Zhang, he took the Buddha nature in terms of a Dharma body and connect with the, con the concept of a principle of a Chinese thought as uh, Li, or which is a univer uh, universal principle. And he synthesized these two ideas to create his assertion that plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature. So basically, this is uh, the summary of my uh, argument. So Ji Zhang, uh, in general, Ji Zhang, he reinterprets the concept of Buddha nature in terms of a universal principle of a Tao nature of a Taoism. So my argument is that 
Jizang, his assertion that the plants and trees are able to possess the Buddha nature actually is a synthesis of the concept of Indian Mahayana Buddhism and Chinese thought, particularly on Taoism of Arkan study. I emphasize the Taoism of Arkan study here because um, Taoism of Arkan study is different from the Laozi and the Zhuangzi. So this is why I more emphasize the Taoism in terms of Arkan studies. Sorry, I think uh, it might have some problem on the camera. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if this works, right? Right. And in the Ji Zhang's argument, uh, his argument can be found in his work, which is called the Da Chen Xuan Lun, or which is translated as a discussion of the profundity of Mahayana. And his assertion is saying in this passage, is saying that not only sentient beings are able to possess a Buddha nature, but the grasses and trees, they are able also able to possess a Buddha nature. So, uh, in fact, Ji Zhang's argument is here. It contains two aspects. One is uh, from the epistemological view. The other one is from the ontological view. So as for the epistemological view, it's showing that here, and I only provided Chinese texts here. But my today's uh, presentation is only focuses on ontological view. That means um, Ji Zhang's argument that plants and trees by themselves are able to possess a Buddha nature. And before this, um, uh, getting to, into my um, examination on the Chinese, uh, the concept of Buddha nature in Chinese Buddhism, I would like to go back to uh, the Indian Mahayana Buddhism a little bit. So as for the concept of Buddha nature, um, it's um, it's from um, the text which is called Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra, which was translated by Dharmakshma. Uh, and in this sutra, it clearly states that the all sentient beings, they are able to possess a Buddha nature. So the, and as for the inclusion of plants and trees in the discussion of Buddha nature in Chinese uh, Buddhism, Jizang's assertion basically is based on his interpretation of a Buddha nature in terms of a universal principle. And I found that this, a principle, uh, this interpretation of a nature uh, is uh, in terms of a universal, uh, is based on the concept of Tao nature belongs to before the Jizang. So therefore, I would like to uh, examine the interpretation of a nature in terms, terms of a universal principle chronologically from Taoism, uh, the, arc, the Taoism of Arkan studies, and then move on to the practical Taoism, or we call as a Dao Jiao, and then uh, we'll move on to the Chinese Buddhism. So uh, from this uh, slide, we can see, um, I would like to examine how Ji Zhang he interpreted uh, the Buddha nature. For example, my question is, is the Buddha nature in Ji Zhang's perspective is universal or not? For example, in Ji Zhang's Da Chen Xuan Lun, and he clearly states that um, the vehicle with the aspect of principle is the middle way Buddha nature. So in from this uh, statement, uh, we found Ji Zhang he interpreted the Buddha nature in terms of a principle. So the question is how Ji Zhang he perceive um, the, uh, the the principle, and also he uh, another statement uh, to show that his interpretation of Buddha nature in reference to the middle way Buddha nature is this uh, this statement. So um, as I showed um, previously that the Jesus concept of Buddha nature refers to the, the middle way Buddha nature. 
And then the idea that the Buddha nature in reference to the middle way actually is from the Nirvana Sutra. It tells that the Buddha nature not only referring to the, the middle way, but uh, it also referring to the Dharma body, especially on the, the ultimate emptiness. So this is basically, this is um, the sources that the Jizang's interpretation of a Buddha nature is from. And so I put again that this is uh, the Jizang's, um, his um, interpretation of uh, the Buddha nature in terms of a principle. So we can see from the here, the, his uh, middle way Buddha nature it actually is from the uh, Nirvana Sutra. And I'm going to discuss this point by looking at the concept of Buddha nature in terms of Dharma body, Buddha nature, and um, principle. So um, from here again, I put on um, this as a Jizang's uh, statement here. And uh, next, I would like to examine um, what are the relationship between this uh, amount of these three by looking at what um, the Dharma body is in the Indian Mahayana Buddhism, especially from the Nirvana Sutra. And then what, what um, the, the principle of Li being discussed in the Chinese archive studies. And then we'll move on to um, how Ji Zhang he interpreted uh, the concept of Li uh, in his accounts of Buddha nature. Uh, so we uh, go back to the India Mahayana Bu uh, Buddhism first. Actually, Buddha nature, or what we call as a Fo Xin in Chinese, this is a Chinese translated term. Actually, um, there are there have been uh, some um, excellent um, scholars. They made uh, great uh, contributions on the discussion of the concept of Buddha nature in Indian Mahayana Buddhism already. So I am not uh, going to uh, spend much time to uh, provide a detailed discussion on this parts. But in general, I would like to say here is um, the Fo Xing, which is a Chinese translated term. Actually, there is no single trans, uh, Sanskrit um, term, which is uh, mapping up to Fo Xing itself. But from here, we can see there are some Sanskrit term. Um, these terms, they can be translated as a Fo Xin in Chinese. So in general, those um, the uh, scholars, they uh, just um, classified uh, this term, uh, which uh, can be translated into Chi uh, Fo Xin in Chinese, they can be classified into three concepts, which is our, uh, the concept of Datu, the concept of Gotra, and the concept of uh, Garba. So this is a general uh, um, idea about what's the um, the term about um, Fo Xin in Chinese. And in Mahayana Buddhism, um, the Dharma body, as I just mentioned, this Dharma body, is, uh, it can be um, the concept of Buddha nature in terms of Dharma body can be uh, tracing back to the Nirvana Sutra. So from here, we can find out from the Nirvana Sutra, the Buddha nature, which is in reference to the Dharma bodies, I provided some um, dharmas here. The, according to the Sutra, the Buddha nature can be interpreted as the ultimate emptiness, or the 12 link uh, condition arising, and um, also the, uh, the middle way. So basically, all these are uh, referring to dharmas. However, um, this, uh, I found that the, uh, for, uh, there is an important passage it's from the Avana Sutra. This is here, it's a saying like, excluded from the Buddha nature are sentient things, such as the old worlds, earthenware, and the storms. That which is the part of from those insentient things, they are named beings that possess a Buddha nature. So this passage, I found that this is very important because this is illustrate that um, in Indian Mahayana Buddhism, 
um, the it is showing like the Laboda nature actually does not include insentient things. And also when we uh, move on to in the Chinese Buddhism, um, in the in the northern and southern dynasty, um, Chinese Buddhism um, they also um, possess the same position as the Nirvana Sutra, as saying here. As for that, there are considered insentient things. There, uh, they neither possess a sentient, uh, sentient, possess a sentience, nor have a capacity to understand and attain the enlightenment, and they are excluded from the Buddha nature. So this is by one of a uh, uh, famous uh, medieval um, Chinese Buddhist exegetes, Bao Liang, and again from his uh, statement, we found. Like uh, even in Chinese Buddhism, in sentient things, they are excluded from the discussion of a Buddha nature. So um, we move on to um, the back to the Indian Buddhism again. In uh, the concept of Buddha, uh, Buddha nature in Indian uh, Buddhist, Mahayana Buddhism, the Buddha nature or Tathagatagarbha in terms of a Dharma body, um, it's, uh, we can find out from the sutra of a neither increase nor decrease. It's also saying like total garba or Buddha nature is referring to Dharma body. And this Dharma body is referring to the wisdom. And this position and also can be found from the Nirvana Sutra as well. So that means um, even the Buddha nature referring to the Dharma body or even uh, referring to the ultimate emptiness. But uh, this Dharma body or the ultimate emptiness, they are all refer uh, referring to wisdom. Okay. So um, also, again, I provided here the Dhyavana Sutras. It's a clear state, as I just mentioned, like um, those insentient things, they are excluded from on uh, the discussion of a uh, Buddha nature. So basically, um, the in general, um, the what's the position of uh, the the Buddha natures in Indian Mahayana Buddhism is uh, in in sentient things. They are not uh, included in the discussion of a uh, Buddha nature. So that's a. Uh, Move on to um, the Chinese thoughts. As here, I put the Chinese thought one because um, in this part, I only would like to focus on the Taoism, especially from the Arkan studies, which is more dealing uh, from the philosophical perspective. So in Taoism, as a, a bit from the, my title, it's about a comparison of a Buddha nature and the Tao nature. So actually in Taoism, the Tao nature is a referring to spontaneity or what we call as a Zizan. So the connection between the Tao, Tao nature and the uh, spontaneity, we can trace it back to the Tao De Jing from the chapter 25 of the Dao De Jing. And if we find out um, the Dao De Jing state, Dao Fa Zi Ran. This statement is showing there is some connection between the Dao and the spontaneity. But um, in Dao De Jing, um, it actually, it does not um, ha um, has any uh, terms uh, referring to Dao nature. So we do, I do not find out the term or any discussion about the Tao nature or the nature of a Tao from the Tao De Jing. But when we move on to um, the archive study, which is uh, in the third century, and uh, especially uh, from the Wang Bi. So this is uh, La Wang Bi, his, um, his, uh, his start to uh, read the he started to interpret a uh, discussion about uh, the nature of the Tao. And uh, he, his commentary to Tao Fa Zi Ran as a Tao Shun Zi Ran. But from this statement, we starting to find out that the Wang Bi is more interested on the discussion of the nature of Tao, but not the Tao itself. So this is, uh, we've, um, we found that there is uh, some uh, move, movement 
from the traditional Taoism to the arcane study. So basically, uh, until the arcane studies, uh, we started to find out uh, those um, the arcane study scholars. They uh, started to discuss uh, to discuss about the nature of the Tao. And from the Wang Bi's uh, this, uh, statement here, uh, we find out um, he connected the Tao with uh, with the uh, uh, Zi Ran. But the question is, is the Tao is identical to spontaneity, or these two are um, not uh, exactly identical? But uh, when we uh, take a look at Wang Bi's Dao Shun Zi Ran, we found uh, he's saying like, Dao lives after spontaneity. That means Dao itself is not identical with uh, spontaneity. And um, so we found uh, that actually there is uh, something more than the Tao. And Wang Bi's uh, discussion, the spontaneity, actually is uh, referring to the nature of the Tao. So uh, Wang Bi, um, he uh, bring us a message like there is uh, some connection between the nature of the Tao and the spontaneity. And uh, other than this, uh, Wang Bi also saying like the spontaneity is also is not only the nature of a Tao, but the, it is also the nature of all existence and all things. That's he's saying, Wang Wu Yi Zi Ran Wei Xi. So that means spontaneity actually is the nature of the Tao and all existence. Okay. And when we move on to the uh, the nature, we found that uh, Wang Bi, he formerly um, also uh, explained that uh, the nature of the Tao is can be um, illustrated in the concept of Li principle. As from this statement, we found that he's saying like the all existence must uh, be supported by something, by a cause. And this cause is uh, in interpreted as um, the principle. This uh, generally, this is about how um, the art and study scholars uh, work done so far. And another art and studies scholar is uh, Guo Xiang. Guo Xiang, uh, he also provide um, um, some discussion on the nature of a Tao uh, in reference to spontaneity. But the Guo Xiang, he also provided there is a very particular concept, which is called Du Hua. Or what we call as the um, the spawn trans, uh, self transformation. So from this uh, his statement here, he's saying the cause of a someone existence is a natural spontaneous uh, spontaneous. This is spontaneous formation of a life is called a self transformation. We found that Guo Xiang. Actually, his concept of a du hua or self transformation is uh, different from traditional Taoism because in traditional Taoism, uh, everything is uh, differentiated from the Tao, which is the, the origin. But in Guo Xiang's concept of a du hua, he's, um, he brings us to another uh, perspective, saying like all things, they um, they are able to make themselves by self transformation. That means it's not really differentiated from the Tao. This is the difference um, uh, that the Guo Xiang made uh, from the traditional Taoism. But again, from this passage, we found that Guo Xiang, he also interpreted nature in terms of spontaneity. So in general, the arcane studies we can make uh, the same uh, the same conclusions here. In Arca studies, we conclude that the spontaneity is the nature of the Tao, all its existence, include the human beings. So therefore, in Taoism, spontaneity as a principle is a universal. And furtherly, the Arca study tells us that the nature of the Tao is a spontaneity, which is a universal principle. So this is the semi-conclusion for my first part. 
And then the second part I would like to discuss about is um, the uh, Chinese thoughts part two, which is uh, the discussion of a Tao nature in terms of a spontaneity in practical Taoism. Um, in the practical Taoism, uh, we uh, more focus on the Northern and the Southern dynasties, especially on the Liang dynasty. But uh, before this period, um, I found that there is um, a statement which is uh, close to the Tao nature, which is found by He Sang Gong's commentary to the Lao Zi, or the Lao, uh, Lao Zi He Sang Gong Zhu. And uh, in his uh, commentary, uh, he comment uh, the Tao De Jin Tao Fa Zi Lan to Tao Xin Zi Ran. So uh, this Tao Xin here, is um, so far I found um, as the 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 text which is a Dao, uh, Dao Xin appears before Northern and Southern Dynasty because um, this terms um, it's very um, particular. But my question is: Is the Dao Xin here is a term, or it is uh, implied as something else? So I uh, I go back to He Zhang Gong's commentary to the Lao Zi, and I found um, that here, um, if we only take a look at uh, He Zhang Gong's statement here, saying the Dao Xin Zi Ran, probably we can interpret the Dao Xin as a term. But when we take a look at the context of a uh, He Zhang Gong's commentary, we find out that when he comments. Uh, ren fa, the, ren fa, ren fa the, the, uh, the human people living after the earth. And his, uh, his He Zhang Gong's ex explanation saying ren dang fa di, uh, hum, uh, people must, must live after um, the characteristics of earth. So, so here I found the ren fa di or ren dang fa di. It's more like uh, there is a subject and there's a verb, and this is an, an object. If we are uh, following these uh, patterns, we uh, go back to uh, the Dao Xin Zi Ran. And uh, my interpretation to He Zhang Gong's Dao Xin Zi Ran, I don't think uh, the Dao Xin here is a term. Dao Xin, I would like to say, this is a Dao, it, uh, Dao as a subject, and a Xin as a verb, and a Zi Ran, spontaneity, is an object. So this is a Tao. Maybe he lives himself by its uh, by uh, living by itself as a spontaneity, a spontaneity in uh, as for his uh, nature. So this is um, I don't in, so far I don't think He Zhang Gong's commentary here um, has um, the um, Tao nature ex uh, appearing as a term. But um, I found I think. My um, the term Tao nature appears uh, is a study from the northern and the southern dynasty, and uh, especially from the practical Taoism. So um, the the two um, the practical uh, Tao Taoist I would like to introduce here is a Tao Tao Hongjing and a Song Wenming, and the, this work uh, is one is collected in Tao Hongjing's uh, Denzhen Yinjue. And the other one is uh, uh, collect in uh, Song Wen means Dao De Yi Yuan. As for the Tao Hong Jin's uh, Den Zhen Yin Jue, actually, um, unfortunately, Tao Hong Jin's uh, this uh, uh, work, Den Zhen Yin Jue, uh, is uh, lost. But uh, fortunately, this uh, passage is collect in a Taoist uh, text. It's called Sang Qin Jing Mi Jue. So this is a uh, good thing. So from the Tao Hongjin's work here, we found that uh, Tao's discussion of uh, Tao, Tao nature in terms of uh, the purity is uh, similar to the concept of Buddha nature, in which the Buddha nature is the true purest nature of Tathagatas and sentient beings. So at uh, this period of time, the concept of Buddha nature, it brought some influence to the practical Taoism, as we can see from uh, Tao Hong Jing's uh, Den Zhen Yin Jue, this passage. And uh, next, um, the practical Taoist I would like to introduce is uh, Song Wen means Dao De Yi Yuan. 
I found out that this text is very significant and critical because this piece of text only exists in fragments. But this text, this fragment determines the chronology of the idea on the relationship between Buddha nature and Tao nature in terms of the insentient things. In other words, it does that. That means that the plants and trees, uh, they possess a Buddha. Tao nature exists after or before the similar idea in Buddha nature. So there's uh, some scholars uh, made a conclusion that um, the idea that the plants and trees possess a Tao nature appear in a tongue text, which is I will show later. And they, they are, um, their conclusion showing like insentient things possess a uh, Tao nature actually is uh, from Chinese Buddhism. But um, from uh, the Song Wen means this text, I think uh, probably when we uh, take a look at Song Wen means uh, work, and uh, his work will give us a different conclusion. And uh, so here, Actually, as I just saying, Song Wen means Dao De Yi Yuan is also lost, and it also exists in fragments. And this actually it exists uh, in a uh, collector in the uh, Ofuchi Ninjis, uh, Tokyo Tokyo Mokuloku. And uh, the, this uh, fragments, I, they are identified with the number B97 and as uh, one four thirty eight. And um, but um, actually, this fragment uh, does not have a title of the text. And how we know that this fragment belongs to um, the song Wen means uh, Dao De Yi Yuan. Fortunately, before the, my research, and uh, there's uh, two uh, scholars, Lu Guolong and Zheng Chan San, they made uh, their uh, great um, um, work to identify it. actually those are fragments they are um with the title Dao De Yi Yuan and uh, uh it's it's in my work i found is that um um some points on how to, uh, I've, i also provide a more examination to identify this text and the list uh, has been shown in, in my uh, article, which is I've uh, been published already. But I'm not spending much time on to discuss on the text identification. But uh, I just would like to spend more time to discuss on the book on the how the Tao nature from the Song Wen means the Dao De Yi Yuan. In his text from here, we can see this paragraph showing like um, Tao nature is connected with the spontaneity. As a Song Wen means he quoted from the two texts. One is from He Sang Gong's commentary to the Dao De Jing, and the other one is from the Dao De Jing. Again, we find out there is um, some connection between the Dao, Dao nature, and the spontaneity. So that means Song Wen means he accepted the idea Dao, nature in terms of spontaneity. It, um, but uh, as I just uh, saying, um, probably in a He Sang Gong's context, um, the Dao Xin is not, uh, the, uh, the Dao Xin is not appear as a term, but the, maybe in Song Wen Ming, in uh, his understanding, he quoted this as uh, authenticity from a uh, He Sang Gong and to create his uh, concept of Dao nature. So basically, Song Wen means a uh, concept of Tao nature. Uh, at one hand, he quoted from the Tao De Jing and He Sang Gong's commentary to the Tao De Jing and connected to spontaneity. But in another part of his work, we found that like, uh, Song Wen means the interpretation of Tao nature. It's showing like his concept of Tao nature is referring to Buddha nature of Buddhism. That Tao nature is a cause that sentient beings who are in a cycle of a rebirth. As we discussed before, the both the Indian Mahayana Buddhism and the most Chinese Buddhism, they clearly excluded in sentient things from the concept of Buddha nature. But we also see this idea in the statement here as showing 一切罕世皆有道心, 
all uh, existence that contains the consciousness, they are able to possess the Tao nature. So therefore, as some scholars that point out that there is a, some inconsistency in Song Wen Min's discussion of Tao nature. That is, on the one hand, Song Wen Min, he proclaims authenticity of a Tao nature in reference to spontaneity by quoting both the Tao Te Ching and He Sang Gong's commentary to the Tao Te Ching. But on the other hand, he borrowed the concept of Buddha nature from the Buddhism um, and he put this in a sense of a re his a religious perspective. And uh, so in this sense, um, we can find out uh, starting from here, Song Wen Ming, he borrowed the Buddha nature in terms of a religious perspective and uh, to in his uh, discussion. But again, I put down here again, um, in Chinese Buddhism, itself at this time, Chinese Buddhism still are saying like insentient things. They do not possess a Buddha nature. This is from Chinese Buddhism at his contemporary time. Okay. And as I mentioned before, the idea of a Tao nature in connection with the plants and trees appear in an important Taoist text in the Tang Dynasty. And this text is called the Dao Jiao Yi Su, pivotal meaning, uh, meaning of Taoism. This uh, text is uh, existed in the Tang Dynasty. And um, in this, this passage is from the Dao Jiao Yi Su. This is a Tang text. So uh, the most uh, scholars, they uh, when they uh, see this uh, passage, they found a uh, discussion of a concept of a down nature in connection with the um, plants and trees, um, that they made a conclusion saying this uh, passage, this idea, uh, this idea actually is uh, from Chinese Buddhism, especially from Ji Zhang. But actually, when we go back to take a look, Song Wen means a Dao De Yi Yuan. We find out in Song Wen means a Dao De Yi Yuan. He, um, his statement here, I highlight in the red colors here. We found that they, uh, this two statements is highly similar or it's uh, almost identical. Okay, so uh, this is a really raised, uh, um, raised uh, some of my uh, question and uh, do further research. And uh, I found um, there's some, there, actually there are some connection between these two texts. So actually um, there's a Dao, de, uh, Dao Jiao Yi Shu, this idea, it's not from Chinese Buddhism, it's from the Song Wen means the Dao De Yi Yuan. But uh, the Dao Jiao Yi Shu actually, um, it uh, is not uh, directly from Song Wen means Dao De Yi Yuan, but uh, Dao Jiao Yi Shu uh, is uh, based on uh, there is another text which is inherited from the Dao De Yi Yuan. So this that means um, the Dao, uh, the concept of Dao nature in connection with the plants and trees actually is a direct, directed and indirected from the Song Wen means the uh, Dao De Yi Yuan. So my, um, here, my semi-conclusions here in, uh, in terms of a practical Taoism, as for the plants uh, possess a Tao nature over the Buddha nature. So question is, is this Tao nature of a practical Taoism is from Buddha nature of Taoism? My conclusion is actually, if we take a look, um, the Song Wen means uh, Dao De Yi Yuan, we find out in fact, the Tang text Dao Jiao Yi Su's idea, actually uh, this idea has been appeared before Ji Zhang on assertion is a bit be, uh, before Chinese Buddhism. So this is my uh, semi conclusion for the second part. Okay. And the next I would like to share is on the Chinese Buddhism. 
So this is the main part. I'm going to examine the Jizang's assertion that the plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature with the aspect of ontology. So um, this is a very long, long quote, but if you are interested, maybe you can take a look at this um, in detail um, in the future. But I just identified uh, this long passage as a P1. And uh, before the, uh, I examine Ji Zhang's uh, um, argu um, argument, I would like to review a little bit of the concept of the nature of Indian Mahayana Buddhism as most of the Chinese Buddhism is here. As uh, we see the from these two texts, they both clearly include, uh, cl clearly excluded in sentient things from Buddha nature. And when we move on to the Ji Zhang's um, um, uh, assertion, um, he interpreted the Buddha nature in terms of a Li or a principle. And as we discussed before, the middle way Buddha nature in terms of a Dharma body in Nirvana Sutra, which is must contain the sentient beings and Dharma Dharmas. But um, but it seems it's different from in Ji Zhang's uh, understanding because Ji Zhang, he interpreted the Buddha nature only in reference to the principle. That means he only, uh, he did not include the sentient beings uh, in his uh, uh, discussion of uh, principle or um, the And it's, so in here, his interpretation of the middle way Buddha nature uh, is in reference to uh, the our uh, the principle. So we, I would like to, uh, we want to uh, ex uh, to dis examine in Ji Zhang's perspective is his concept of principle is a universal as a like the Tao nature, which is an, um, as an, a spontaneity. So, so here we can uh, from this we can see like um, the Ji Zhang's concept he. Jesus' concept of uh, teaching and the principle, he divided uh, this into uh, perspective. He's saying like a teaching as a jiao and the principle or li, they actually they are uh, different. The two here is referring to uh, twofold truth as from the Majamika. But in here, the, uh, the teaching or twofold truth is only referring to teaching jiao. So in Ji Zhang's perspective, teaching as a jiao, it's not considered as the ultimate true reality. Maybe it is a true reality, but it is not the ultimate true reality because the true ultimate true reality is a uh, principle or li. So he gave, uh, he, he quoting the, uh, the metaphor, as a uh, uh, finger point to a moon. He's saying like a uh, uh, finger, the teaching is like a uh, finger, uh, finger. His is uh, leading someone to understand what is the ultimate true reality is. But the finger itself is not identical with the ultimate true reality, which is a uh, li or principle. So that means uh, the Ji Zhang, he's in his perspective, Teaching is a referring to Li, is a part of a Li, but it is not equivalent to Li. So this is a Ji Zhang's um, understand, uh, his um, interpretation to principle and the teaching. And now uh, I would like to introduce that Ji Zhang's, um, how he um, create, um, make his argument is possible. There is an important method he uh, applied in his argument. And uh, this um, method is called the Nei Li Wai, or within Li, or beyond Li. And actually this method is not belongs to Ji Zhang. Uh, before the Ji Zhang, um, his teacher Fa Lang and the Zhi Yi, they all applied this uh, method uh, to create their own uh, philosophical uh, system. But as for the Ji Zhang, here is a question. If the Li uh, is it identical um, to, um, is it referring to the principle only? So that means, uh, I found that this is um, it's, um, important uh, point here because although the Li <coughs> appeared in Ji Zhang's text, uh, discussion, but we cannot uh, to interpret the, this word 
um, as one meaning through the whole con uh, whole text or whole content. It because uh, the maybe one word uh, also uh, applied different more than one meaning. Uh, as this um, this situation also happened in Ji Zhang. So how Ji Zhang uh, he he uh, interpreted uh, Li as an, another word. Originally, um, I found like if we interpreted Li as um, uh, the principle. When I was uh, reading uh, this p this two passage, um, it really doesn't work. So this it really inspired me to think about all the possibility to interpret Li in Ji Zhang's argument. And I found that um, Ji Zhang, probably Li could be interpreted to all the meaning, for example, like a zhong shen, okay? But the zhong shen, it does not really mean sentient being, okay? It's maybe, but it's not exactly um, identical. But the first, uh, I found uh, the uh, one possible uh, interpretation of Li in reference to Zhongshan is uh, from Vasubhatu's uh, commentary to the Nirvana Sutra. And he's saying uh, Zhongshan shi Li um, and Li Wai Geng Wu Zhongshan. So it really provides me another interpretation of Li as in terms of uh, uh, Zhongshan. But actually this is uh, this statement also being quoted in Ji Zhang's text. So uh, that means that Ji Zhang, he himself, he uh, he know this idea. And um, in this sense, I interpreted Ji Zhang's uh, the, um, the passage here. I put down the Li, if we interpreted the Li as a uh, Zhongshan, we can say the Li Nei as a within Li, within the uh, Zhongshan. Uh, they are possess a Buddha nature. It's it works, and if we're saying like um within the sentient beings, there is a sentient being possess a Buddha nature. It doesn't really uh make sense for me. So uh Li in terms of a uh, Zhongshan or sentient being, it might work to uh, in P two, but it not it's not working on for P three. So. It also inspired me to think more about Li. So here, Li, um, my uh, my suggesting is this Li in this context, it might be referring to mind of a subject or a zhu ti de xin. It's this is more dealing with a more subjective. So Ji Zhang's definition of a zhong sa might be not uh, the, the sentient being in a holistic view. So that means probably Ji Zhang's uh, definition of a zhong shen is, is more likely in terms of objects. So that's a, a, is a, my original uh, guessing. But how we uh, uh, to uh, to take close look at uh, if my interpretation or my guess uh, my guessing is correct or not? I go back to uh, the some uh, Ji Zhang's um, uh, text. And he also mentioned, he talks about the Zhongshan in terms of objects. This can be traced back to his discussion of sentient beings in terms of jia ren, provisional true. And here, jia ren, it does not mean that unreal person. But jia ren, provisional person, is a reverse to a discussion of a person in terms of a condition arising. That is, a person is composed of a various condition, such as the five aggregates, wu yun, forms, sensation, perception, mental function, and consciousness. So these five aggregates, they are considered five major conditions or elements to make a person exist. So in this sense, the definition of a zhong shen in Ji Zhang's perspective is not identical to the one in the Indian Buddhism. Because in Indian Buddhism, the zhong shen is referring to the old sentient beings who possess the consciousness. So Ji Zhang's definition of a zhong shen is not in a holistic view, but it's divided into subjective and objective perspective. So Ji Zhang's uh, Zhong Shen is an object in objective view, uh, perspective, it's referring to objects. 
And so, you know, when we say xin wai yu xin nei zhong sheng, it's a zhong sheng within and beyond a subject, as a, a subject mind. And this is not referring to someone in terms of a subject. So zhong sheng in here as an object in terms of objective uh, perspective. So this is a uh, ji zhang's uh, interpretation, reinterpretation of a zhong sheng. So for the li here, it refers to mind of a subject. It does not refer to mind of an, an object. So it does not refer, for, exa uh, for example, it does not re really referring to the mind of Zhongshen because the Zhongshen are considered objects as, oppo as opposed to a subject. So therefore, we have a definition for Li and the Zhongshen. And then when we go back to a uh, Jizang text, so we found that when we uh, um, put down the, these two definition and then maybe not to the P2, we can read this statement, Li Nei Yu Zhong Shen, it means that within someone's uh, mind, this, uh, they are able to possess a Buddha nature. And especially as for P3, we can read that for those Zhong Shen, which is object, for those uh, Zhong Shen within someone's mind, they are able to possess a Buddha nature. So I found that this uh, the interpretation Li as a mind of a subject and a Zhong Shen is in reference to objects. Actually, it's a really uh, work to his um, argument P2 and P3. So when we uh, read um, Ji Zhang's um, his statement, it's saying like uh, uh, all uh, plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature. We can read this, the Zhong Shen in terms of objects. The Zhong Shen and the plants are within mind. And the Zhong Shen and the plants is beyond mind. So also the, he, he mentioned like Wu Yan Bu Jian Li Wai Zhong Shen and Yi Chie Fa. It's saying like um, the someone is unable to perceive uh, those are five eyes. They are unable to perceive sentient beings and all dharmas which is, exist beyond mind or beyond a subject. So I found that Li and uh, Zhong Shen's interpretation to mind of subject and uh, Zhong Shen as an object is uh, more work to Ji Zhang's argument. Okay. So the, the Ji Zhang's methods, he divided the Zhong Shen into subjective and objective, self and the others, Zi and the Ta, and the Li and the Wai, within and the beyond. Actually, this division is not from Buddhism. This is a division, it's from um, Taoism, especially uh, from the archive studies. And I found that Ji Zhang in his commentary, it, uh, his introduction to, uh, uh, in his commentary to uh, the, Maj uh, the Majamiga Shastra, and uh, uh, he stated, he quoted from Guo Xiang, which, uh, who is the archive scholars, of uh, archive studies scholars we mentioned before. And uh, Guo Xiang, he comments to the Zhuangzi. And in this, actually, this statement is from the chapter six of uh, Zhuangzi. So Guo Xiang's statement here is also illustrate, um, is talking about uh, someone's experiential uh, practices. And this is uh, it's divided some experience within and without ex uh, the external uh, uh, worlds. So in this sense, we found that the Ji Zhang's methods to divide the Zhong Shen into uh, the self and the others within and beyond, it's more likely uh, based on the Taoism of archive studies. So here, um, we found that the Zhong Shen in, uh, in Buddhism is um, referring to holistic view. But in Chinese thought, uh, in, especially in Ji Zhang, he divided Zhong Shen into self and others, and a Zhu Ke, subject and object, and a Zhu Ke, quite subjective and objective, and also within and beyond. So when we are reading the Li Nei Li Wai, this Li is referring to mind of a subject, and this is beyond Li, which means for those objects or all, all, all existed in the external world. And we think Li or Li Nei Zhong Shen, Li Nei Cao Mu, which are referring to images, is which is a within mind, okay, which is um, is a more referring to the image. Okay, 
So uh, we go back to this is a passage. Um, actually, um, Ji Zhang's argument is here. The reason why he created his argument saying plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature. Um, he um, it's not only for doctrinal argument. Uh, actually, this is a uh, debate. I think uh, there is a spa spatial subject he would like to talk to. And uh, this uh, his uh, subject is only for those who uh, proclaims like uh, the uh, laws of Buddha nature only exist within sentient beings. And uh, he's saying like uh, this is just a bias. The Buddha nature cannot uh, be only exist only within sentient beings. It must be uh, exist existing pervasively, both inside and outside of sent uh, sentient beings. So I um, I draw this as a diagram to summarize the Ji Zhang's um, how he uh, he applied his method Li Nei Li Wai to create his um, argument. So basically, it is here. Um, Zhong Shen here we can find out that this is um, a some uh, a subject. And then also the Li in here is referring to a mind. And this mind is only to the mind of a subject. It's not the mind of uh, objects, Zhong Shen. So this mind is only the mind of a subject. So it's in outside of the mind of a subject, which is this is a phenomenon, ex, uh, external world. So Zhong Shen is referring to objects. And also plants, they are also existing in an external world. They also referring to objects, and uh, inside the mind of this subject is the uh, the Zhongshen is referring to an image, and also the same as the plants and trees. They are also referring as the image, and I put under this to, into uh, the two different colors is because in terms of the external uh, external world, which is the uh, beyond Li. So this is more goes to the discussion of Buddha nature in terms of ontology. And uh, the, the yellow colors here is more dealing goes to the epistemological perspective. So that means in Jizong's argument, his uh, plants and trees are able to possess the Buddha nature in terms of ontology is that um, plants and trees by themselves they are able to possess the Buddha nature. So it's not from someone's interpretation. It's not from someone's perceptual non-duality. So that is uh, um, plants and um, Buddha nature is do exist within the plants uh, ontologically. So basically, this is about um, um, how Ji Zhang he applied this method of Li Nei Li Wai to uh, create his argument. And I created this chart um, in as a summary, like um, Ji Zhang. Uh, this is in referring to the external world, uh, ta objects, and uh, this is a referring to self, the mind of a some a subject. So within the the Li, when uh, Ji Zhang he argued that uh, as the um, as the in terms of epistemology, when we are saying uh, sentient beings have a Buddha nature, that means uh, the plants must have a Buddha nature. If we say the plants not uh, doesn't have a Buddha nature, that means Zhongshan cannot have a Buddha nature. That is uh, from the uh, non-dual perception. But uh, um, in from the ontological perspective, which is the, in the external uh, perspective. Uh, external world. And Ji Zhang, he argued that if we say like the uh, Zhongshan possess a Buddha nature, in here Zhongshan is objects, and uh, then the plants must have a Buddha nature. But if we say like a plants do cannot have a Buddha nature, that means Zhongshan as objects, they cannot um, have a Buddha nature because Zhongshan in this term is uh, referring to objects. So let's go uh, go back to my first slide. So Jesus' assertion of plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature is starting from the concept of uh, Indian Mahayana uh, Buddhism, um, which is the concept of Buddha nature. So in which Jesus he only took a part of this concept, especially from the Dharma body, and then he synthesized with the Chinese concept of Li, which is a universal principle. And uh, combined um, the interpretation 
of the Buddha nature in Ji Zhang's uh, perspective, it's only referring to the, uh, the middle way, which is considered as a universal principle. And he synthesized this two um, um, the ideas and it's uh, recreated um, the, his new um, perspective and argument by saying like the plants and trees are able to possess the Buddha nature. So my conclusion is, as for the comparison of Buddha nature and the Tao nature, Jesus' definition of the middle way Buddha nature is a universal principle. And it is a parallel to the spontaneity of Tao nature. His assertion contains both epistemology and ontology. And my today's presentation only focuses on ontological perspective. His inter interpretation of Buddha nature in terms of a universal principle is not from the traditional Taoism, but as I argued, it refers to Taoism of archive studies. So therefore, Ji Zhang's his assertion is a synthesis of a Buddhism and the Taoism. Um, as back to my title, this is a dialogue as it takes place as a mutual influence between the Chinese Buddhism and the Taoism. As the Ji Zhang, his, uh, his, um, as the Chinese Buddhism interpreted the Buddha nature as a universal principle based on the concept of Li in terms of a nature of the Taoism for our kind of study. However, the concept of Buddha nature brought a reference to practical Taoism to connect the Tao nature with the sentient realm. So therefore, there is a dialogue taking place between the Buddha nature of Chinese Buddhism and the Tao, uh, Tao nature of Taoism. So thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. And uh, uh, this uh, is uh, basically this is about my uh, today's presentation. Thank you. So I don't know if there is any question. Um, professor, there are a few questions in the chat room. OK. Oh, let me switch the screen. OK. Um, I'm reading the question. The first one is, when did you have the interest in studying this topic and how influences you in this concept? Okay, so as for the, my interest, actually, um, Personally, um, I'm more uh, interested in some issues on uh, the Buddhism and the environmental ethics. So starting from my MA um, programs, I, uh, I, my study is more focuses on how Buddhism um, responds to the environmental ethics. So that's uh, my starting point. And then when I uh, move on to um, the, my PhD, I would like to continue on this topic. So I was uh, thinking, and at that time, I was uh, talking with uh, my uh, MA uh, uh, supervisor, and he suggested me to, um, uh, to do something more than not just only focus my study on Buddhism itself, but uh, maybe I can uh, think about uh, there is uh, some uh, dialogue between the Buddhism and the Taoism. So this is why uh, I pick up the, uh, the discussion of the nature, especially on Buddha nature. And then uh, we found like um, the, um, Buddhism, uh, uh, sorry, on Taoism, and they also uh, have some discussion on Tao nature. So this really inspires me to uh, create this uh, topic. Okay. And the second question is, how does this concept affect you as a person? So uh, from the uh, very beginnings, uh, as I just was saying, this is just, I only uh, would like to think about um, how Buddhism responds to environmental ethics. That is more like uh, uh, academic study. 
okay, it's not uh, really effective to my personal experiences. So, but when I uh, was uh, doing my this work, when I doing my PhD, and I really found out uh, this is really uh, encouraged me to um, uh, to including uh, the nature to uh, how I perceive the nature and how I perceive not only nature, not only the environment in the external world, but how I perceive the whole uh, external world, including both uh, uh, people as a sentient being or zhongshan, and also uh, plain, uh, nature, how I perceive all uh, my external world. And this is really drives me to uh, to think about um, maybe something their existence we must live in a respect to the external world. That means it's really decreasing my uh, uh, personal subject. This is um, how these topics really infect my uh, myself in person. And the third question is uh, how will you discuss this topic to people who devoted to Indian Mahayana Buddhism and concept of Buddha nature? This is an interesting question. Uh, I remember when I was uh, doing this uh, research work and uh, I used to uh, ask my uh, some friends, they are, um, they are monks. Uh, in uh, uh, um, Southern Asia um, Buddhist temple. And then when I was asked them, uh, did you think uh, insentient things are able to possess a Buddha nature? And then he responded to me, he replied uh, without any uh, 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 consideration. He said, he just replied back to me saying like, uh, um, only uh, sentient beings uh, are able to possess about our nature. There is no sense to include in sentient things in the discussion. So this is uh, that really gives me a sense like um, uh, yes, he he's right, and um, but um, in maybe the, this is the original uh, Mahayana Buddhism is, but uh, when we move on to the to Chinese Buddhism. I think uh, this is a uh, very important for us, especially for someone who are interested in uh, uh, study the Chinese Buddhism, because the Chinese Buddhism is, um, a, when the Buddhism is being uh, um, transported into China, and uh, it's started to uh, have some interaction uh, with the, the Chinese uh, society, culture, and uh, some in intellectual, uh, philosophy, etc. So, and also it's maybe over like uh, some by sound like a political reason. They it has been always have a sound like argument and a debate between Buddhism and uh, Chinese uh, religion or Chinese traditions. So, uh, it really makes the Chinese Buddhism um, um, starting to different. It, uh, I'm not uh, saying like it's, um, how much different. But uh, for um, Chinese Buddhism, it might be um, starting to be not exactly uh, identical to Indian Buddhism, um, even like Indian Buddhism or Indian Mahayana Buddhism. But uh, so when we um, study Chinese Buddhism, we must be careful on, um, we, have, we also have to taking Chinese thoughts into consideration, even like a Chinese um, social culture and uh, history into consideration. So this is um, what I think we must be careful on and pay attention when we are doing uh, Chinese Buddhism. So for my, uh, at, at least um, from my today's presentation, it shows like um, from the same, uh, the idea, plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature. This idea at least illustrate um, this is a synthesis of uh, Chinese thought and um, uh, Indian uh, Mahayana Buddhism. So that means um, Buddhism is really incorporated some Chinese thought in it. And Ji Zhang, originally, he deconstructed the concept of uh, Buddha nature in terms of a Dharma body, and he 
uh, and also Zhongshen. And then he reconstruct uh, the concept of uh, Dharma body into principle or Li. And he reinterpreted Li as a universal principle. And uh, he applied this idea and uh, to create his argument, uh, saying that plants and trees uh, are able to possess this universal principle, which is the middle way Buddha nature. So this is, uh, I would like to say about um, the Chi Chinese Buddhism. Okay. So any questions so far? Um, professor, we only have these three questions at the moment, but we encourage all the participants to write their questions for you in the chat room. So at the moment, we would like to invite you to share more about the topic. Okay, um, let me go back to um, here. So uh, I'm not sure it's um, here. I would like to say more detail because I didn't uh, spend much time to uh, to examine this uh, paragraph. So I would like to uh, talk more about this paragraph. I found that this paragraph is uh, important. And uh, the first time when I was uh, reading this paragraph, I found the diff uh, some difficulties um, at that time. It's uh, because um, when we were uh, when we was uh, reading this text, and uh, probably the, we all read this as uh, um, an affirmative statement, which means it might be like um, there. It sounds like uh, there is uh, some dialogue. Um, uh, it, um, although this is not a real dialogue, this is a, but this is a, like a kind of like a conversation Ji Zhang he made um, uh, by himself. But uh, he created it here is by question and answering. Okay. And so when we are reading this, um, um, if we just reading uh, this uh, literally, and everything is just goes to like a very straightforward. It's a very straight um, statement. And uh, then I was uh, reading this uh, passage several times, and I found um, maybe Ji Zhang's um, statement, um, it's uh, not uh, all are very straightforward and, it, and also affirmative statement. For example, he's saying like, here is saying today. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Here is uh, I'm going to illustrate the, the Buddha. Uh, it the, um, um, possessing Buddha nature or not. So the question is um, for those are sentient beings to, uh, beyond um, a subject. Um, uh, there's a uh, Buddha nature. Okay. So this is uh, but why? Uh, um, the question is, um, how about for those uh, sentient beings, they are within the, uh, uh, those are sentient beings the within the, the, the mind, which is the image, they are possessed of Buddha nature. I think uh, this is, it, it, it sounds like uh, it's the statement, but uh, um, I would like to say that this is, is for me, I reading this, it's more like um, he, he not only um, making a statement, but also he um, he provided a little bit of criticism. He he was criticizing for those who just saying like Buddha nature only exists in the external world. So he's saying like for those who saying uh, those are sentient beings that are in the external world they have a Buddha nature. But how about uh, the sentient beings are inside the mind? Okay, and then. This is his argument is that he answered like, um, so if um, the if we say the, um, the sentient beings are outside of the, the mind, this is not the uh, question. Why? Because the beyond the mind, originally, those are sentient beings, they do not have um, the, uh, th there is no, um, the, what we, we really call as a sentient beings. So in that way, how could we um, add, create a question by saying um, in the external world that there is a sentient being who possesses a, a Buddha nature? 
I think of this a statement. It's more referring to the concept, the doctrine of emptiness. So actually, there. It, uh, I don't know if you are uh, uh, you remembered. He interpreted the same Zhong Shen as a Jia Ren, provisional person. So in that sense, the provisional person actually this person is a uh, is composed of the elements, the five uh, aggregates. So he's saying like actually there is no something which we can call as a Zhong Shen. So if there it's uh, everything it goes to emptiness, and then there is no Zhong Shen, and so there is no Buddha nature. So the, it also um, uh, given a metaphor by uh, it's like uh, Yan Zhong Zhi Shui. It's like there is the water in fire, because um, actually uh, this um, the essence of a fire on uh, the this uh, fired is the, by emptiness, and uh, this is originally there is no substantial self existed. So uh, because um, this fire actually is not a uh, substantial exist. So this is uh, there is no sense that we call there is the fire in a water. OK, so this and he, this is from the external perspective and he this and he argued that this is why the why if we saying like uh, in the external world or the why if we say there is no Zhong Shen and uh, there is no Fo Xing. And so um, because the Zhong Shen and the Fo Xing, they do not originally exist. So even like a five eyes, even like a, um, the, even like a Buddha eyes, they are unable to perceive it. OK, so this is uh, I found it. And Ji Zhang, he, he, the interesting point is here. He quoted this. This is, says is from the, uh, the Diamond Sutra. So his discussion of a Buddha nature actually uh, it's not really only uh, contains the, those uh, sources from those Tathagatagarbha uh, and the Buddha nature texts, but he also uh, quote from uh, those um, uh, sutras from uh, Prajna Paramitas. Okay, and so, so talking, which is talking about the emptiness as the ultimate to reality. Okay, so at least we can see here Ji Zhang's argument on saying as I um, point here in this part. Um, his interpretation of even like um, the middle way or emptiness. This emptiness is not referring to the ultimate emptiness uh, in reference to wisdom, as Nirvana Sutra saying. This emptiness is uh, is more like a condition arising. So when we apply the condition arising into the discussion, uh, into the dis our discussion in the external world, all things, the substantial essence of all objects, even Zhong Shen and the Chao Mu, their the essence it goes to emptiness. So this is why on uh, the Ji Zhang he quotes the uh, he he, he was he was not quoting um Tathagarbha and the Buddha Nature Sutras, but he he was quoting uh the Diamond Sutra. So I believe like Ji Zhang's argument uh, here. Ji Zhang's argument is here. It's more likely to dealing with the uh, uh, external world. So it's saying like based on this meaning, not uh, not only plants do not have a Buddha nature, but the sentient beings do not have a Buddha nature because the sentient zhong, well, I cannot say sentient being. I, I must say zhong shen. So zhong shen as an object, they do, they do not possess a Buddha nature because they are all objects. So if we would like to illustrate um, some uh, who's uh, who's able to possess a Buddha nature, it's uh, not only sentient beings have a Buddha nature, but uh, plants and trees, they are able to possess a Buddha nature. And uh, I found that this uh, statement also important if we are reading this passage saying, he's saying uh, this argument it's for someone who argue like 
uh, the Buddha nature does not exist in the outside world, external world. Okay, so this is really drives me to uh, to read the whole text dif in, uh, differently. He's saying the his object, his argument, the object, the uh, yeah, the object of his argument here is for someone who proclaims the uh, Buddha nature does not exist in the external world, only in the world, in the inner world. So Ji Zhang saying, so this is why he's going to argue uh, um, the Neyo for him, the Buddha nature, it's uh, also uh, possess the uh, the Buddha nature uh, uh, in uh, within. Okay, so he also uh, called uh, from Sen Zhao, Dao Yue Hu Zai Ji Wu Er Zhen. So if we go back to uh, uh, Sen Zhao, uh, Sen Zhao's work, uh, Zhao Lun, we found like uh, actually this statement is from uh, Sen Zhao's Zhao Lun. But uh, in this context, um, uh, Sen Zhao, when he was uh, talking this uh, idea, um, his discussion is, is from the more ontological uh, perspective. So this is, uh, makes me to more ensure uh, Ji Zhang's arguments on the plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature. Actually, this is, is more um, from the ontological perspective. But um, as I just mentioned before, um, in another uh, paragraph, Ji Zhang, he also uh, made a uh, similar uh, argument by saying plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature from epistemological perspective. And uh, if you um, take a look at um, his argument in that passage, uh, let me go back to the first here. As it's here, we found out uh, his argument is he quoting from uh, the Yokachara text. So based on his quote uh, text, um, even the similar um, statement is appearing here. But uh, by uh, his quoting sources, we can find uh, we can conclude that his uh, this statement is uh, from epistemological perspective. So this is how I identified um, Ji Zhang. He created um, his um, um, argument um, by uh, from from two different uh, uh, perspective. This is how I made. So uh, to read actually to read the Ji Zhang's text is not very easy because Ji Zhang. I found that this. Uh, this Buddhist is very uh, interesting. His uh, position and even like uh, his um, his uh, word, uh, the meaning implied in some terms or words, it's uh, is changing and changing. For example, like uh, as a, as a, I showed in my pre uh, today's presentation, uh, even Li originally. Um, Li, I found uh, there are some several scholars. They interpreted um, Ji Zhang's mention here. Ji Zhang's he mentioned um, the vehicle with the aspect of a principle in uh, the middle of Buddha nature. So based on this, when uh, I saw that some uh, scholars, when they were interpreted Ji Zhang's method, Li, Ne, Li, Wai, within Li and uh, with, uh, beyond Li, may also interpret Li in this method as a middle way. So this is, um, so at the first time, I was, uh, uh, was trying to insert um, the, the, the meaning of Li, Ne, Li, Wai, as the middle way, as I put it here, um, as I put it here, Li, I put it as Li as uh, the middle way Buddha nature. But the question is, if the middle way is considered as the ultimate to reality, and everything must include it within it, within the middle way Buddha nature, it, there is a nothing must be beyond this ultimate to reality. 
So this is why when I was uh, reading Li in the Nei Li Wai as the Middle Way Buddha Nature, this Li Wai is really uh, raised um, some question in my mind. And uh, it's addressed me to uh, think about other, other possibility to interpret Li. And uh, fortunately, as I just uh, mentioned here, uh, Ji Zhang, he, oh, I put it here. Ji Zhang, he, in his, uh, in his work, he say Li Wai Ji Wu Zhong Shen. And I found this statement, actually, it is from Basu Batu's commentary to the Nirvana Sutra. So maybe uh, because Ji Zhang, he quoted it here. So it means uh, Ji Zhang, he has this idea in his mind. And Ji Zhang, he might um, uh, um, um, trying to uh, imply this um, idea to uh, re-increate uh, his argument by redefining the meaning of a sentient being, uh, not, so, not a sentient being, redefining the meaning of Zhongshan. So this really spent me a lot of time. Uh, I remember when I was uh, doing this, re uh, this research work, I spent uh, the exactly two days to only thinking about what's the meaning of Li in Li Nei and Li Wai. So it really takes me a lot of uh, time to, to think about this. And I found uh, the, um, this, uh, uh, the meaning of Li is very critical and uh, it's very important. And uh, it is because when we find out that there is um, that all the possible interpretation to this word Li, and uh, it's really unlocked me to interpret uh, the the Ji Zhang's whole um, argument. So, in fact, um, this is why I'm saying um, Ji Zhang's uh, work is not easy to read, and uh, we must be very careful. And also, the more important thing is even. Um, Today, so those the most of um, the Chinese uh, the uh, the statement the reference I provided in my presentation, it's most only from Ji Zhang's work Da Chen Xuan Lun only one work, but the the, the point is uh, when we are reading his uh, work, we found uh, the this Li the uh, the meaning of Li this work. It's a the meaning of a li is a changing within one work. So that means that if we would like to examine um, the, uh, the Ji Zhang's uh, assertion, plants and trees have a Buddha nature, we must only focus on this, um, um, this parts. We must focus on this parts. And, uh, and uh, the interpretation to li, and also must be uh, more uh, based on this context because um, the in other parts of the text, it also it might have implied to other meaning. For example, as I just mentioned, this is a li can refer to the middle way. Li could refer to the middle way Buddha nature, et cetera. So this is why uh, when I was doing this research work, it really gives me um, some inspiration on the reading the text, the Chinese text, especially Jesus text. We must be very careful. And also uh, my uh, research is here. Um, uh, for some, um, for this, this some content, for example, it's here. Uh, he gave the, uh, there is a, some a metaphor on that there is a fire within the water. This metaphor is also appeared in Ji Zhang's uh, another work. It's uh, about his uh, Zhong Guan Lun, uh, uh, his commentary to the Majamika Shastra. And so that um, the, the, this co uh, the commentary to the Majamika um, Shastras, this work is more, uh, his early work. So at that time, his, uh, his idea is more focused on Majamika thought. 
it's not uh, much. It's not about the Buddha nature. But in the Da Chen Quan Lun here, is he included the Buddha nature? So this is also I'm making more like some uh, textual comparison. So. This is why um, when I was reading this paragraph, I don't think his uh, his uh, explanation here is based on uh, traditional uh, uh, Buddha nature, the concept of Buddha nature. He's um, he only uh, borrowed the uh, the term the Buddha nature and uh, insert this term and uh, into uh, Majamika thought over the um, something that some ideas in the context of the, the the doctrine of emptiness so this is why i found um the ji zhang's um the, his text his work it's uh it's complex it's not uh, easy to read and but uh, fortunately um i think um when I found uh, he has the different interpretation to Zhongshan and the principle and unlocked and to find out how he make his argument by using this method, Li Nei Li Wai. And this really provided me like uh, to note how Ji Zhang, he reinterpreted the Buddha nature and incorporated Chinese thought to create a new idea that the plants and trees are able to possess a Buddha nature. So that's it. I think that's the time. And uh, this is all about my today's presentation. So thank you for your time. And if you have a more uh, discussion or suggest suggestion or comments, and uh, please uh, let me know by uh, email. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen, for that wonderful and informative talk. Due to time constraints, today's online lecture, a dialogue between Buddhism and Taoism, a comparison of the concepts of Buddha nature and Tao nature of medieval China is now over. Thank you again for your partaking. Please be reminded to fill out the feedback questionnaire for this lecture and leave your valuable comments. You can scan the QR code in your screen or click the website posted in the chat room for the feedback questionnaire. The admission of the bachelor degree in Buddhist studies is still ongoing until August. If there is anyone you know who aspires to learn Buddhism, please let them visit the website for more information. The department also welcomes overseas students. Master degree program has English and Chinese track. For those who wishes to study Buddhism, please come and join us. For more details, please check out our website. So, Buddhist <laughs> 最后一个场次将于下周六五月二十六上午十点半至十二点举行由佛光大学佛教学系谈政中副教授主讲台湾的观音与妈祖信仰期待与您线上再会 Thank you for participating today. I wish you peace and good health. And we will see you next week.